Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. She's coming home. She's coming home. That's right. The Indiana Fever have made their decision, and they have hired Stephanie White, former coach at Connecticut, also former coach with Indiana. She was the head coach for the Indiana Fever in 2015-2016 before moving on to coach at Vanderbilt. And then she was there for five years before jumping on board with the Connecticut Sun, where she led the Sun the last two seasons. And then, of course, as you know, um, led them to a 27 and 13 record in 2023 and a 28 and 12 record in 2024. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Again, this is Rudy Rodriguez Showmont. This is Rudy's Rant. We practice facts over feelings. The decision has been made. Stephanie White is the new head coach of the Indiana Fever. So what does this mean? What does this mean? She is a career 92 and 56 in the WNBA. She didn't do too well at Vanderbilt. Um, <laughs> that's putting it my putting it very, very nicely. I mean, they were not good when she was there. Now some people are are made for coaching college basketball. Some people are not made for coaching college basketball. I don't have a whole lot of information as far as her history at Vandy, but she has definitely been a successful head coach in the WNBA, very successful the last two years. She is from Indiana. I mean, well, she's born in Illinois, but she went to Purdue. She went to high school in Indiana. I don't know. When, when did she move to? I mean, she probably... <clears throat> 1995 Indiana Miss Basketball, 1995 Gatorade National Player of the Year, USA Today National Player of the Year, went to Purdue, led them to a national championship, five years in the WNBA. I mean, what more can you want? I know there are people out there that I have seen on different posts on Facebook who don't like this decision. I've actually read some where they said that she's a better coach than Christy Sides. I'm sorry, that Christy Sides is a better coach than her. And I had to respond to those ridiculous things and remind them that, you know, she did just beat Christy Sides in a series 2-0. And most people who have basketball sense would agree that the Indiana Fever had at least the best two players on the floor when they would have Caitlin Clark and Kelsey Mitchell out there, and probably three of the four best players on the floor when you include Aaliyah Boston, because I guess I would say that Alyssa Thomas might be the third best player. Now, you might want to argue and say Alyssa Thomas was the second best player on the floor, but I don't think Alyssa Thomas is all that great. I think she's a hard worker. I don't think she's a tremendously skilled basketball player, um, whereas I think Kelsey Mitchell skill-wise would run circles around Alyssa Thomas. That's my opinion. And you know I have no problem giving my facts over feelings. Skill-wise, Kelsey Mitchell is a better player than Alyssa Thomas. So you had a team in which you had three of the four best players on the floor, and you lost 2 nothing because one coach was just better than the other. You can say, oh, they had Marina Mabry, they had DeWanna Bonner, they had DJ Carrington, they had all blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 uh. No, we know what it was. There was a coaching gap. There was a coaching gap. I mean, it, it was just, it was clear as day. So what do we have here? We have a, I mean, heck, if you look at Stephanie White's background as a player, I mean, how tall is she? I think she, she's five foot nine, 155 pounds. Man, who does that sound like? Caitlin Clark is 5'11", 155 pounds. I mean, take a look at this. I mean, she's a, she shot 47% as a senior at Purdue, 44% from three. 80% from the line, average 20 points per game. Tell you what, that's the type of person I think you might want to have coaching a player like Caitlin Clark, who understands that you need Caitlin Clark to push the tempo, push the pace, and uh, bring success to this team, this franchise, and get it to the next level. This, is, this was said today by Kelly Kroskoff. President of Basketball Operations in a statement, as we enter this new era of fever basketball, I am thrilled to welcome back, welcome Stephanie back to the franchise. 
Stephanie is a part of the fabric of this franchise, both as a former player and as a member of our championship coaching staff. So I'm quite familiar with her elite basketball IQ and leadership style. I am confident there is no one who better understands our culture or is more equipped to lead our group of players to the next level. Also, yeah, she was an assistant coach with Indiana um, with um the Indiana Fever from 2011 to 2014 before taking over for Lynn Dunn. <clears throat> also, it says here, uh, let's see. This is from Stephanie White in a statement. I'm incredibly proud and honored to return home to Indiana and lead the Fever during such a pivotal moment in this franchise's history, as well as during such an important time throughout women's athletics. This franchise has and always will be committed to winning, and I look forward to working every day to help deliver another WNBA title to the greatest basketball fans in the world. So let's take a listen at what Stephanie White had to say as she was interviewed already today about this job. So let's take a quick listen. What made you want to take this job? Well, first and foremost, it's home. I mean, mm. this is a franchise in the Indiana Fever, Indiana Pacers that's in my DNA. Um, grew up in Indiana, played in Indiana, played with the franchise, of course, a part of the franchise when we won the WNBA championship. And, and secondly, this young, exciting roster. You think about a generational player in Caitlin Clark and back-to-back -back rookie of the years with Aaliyah Boston. Kelsey Mitchell, I think, had the best year of her career. It's just an exciting roster. What an outstanding moment we have in women's basketball right yeah. now. And to come back and be a part of it in my home state with my home franchise, it's just a unique opportunity. And I'm so thankful and grateful for it. You know, Stephanie, you mentioned also in your statement that it is an important time in women's basketball. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare to coach a star like Caitlin Clark, who commands attention both on the floor and by fans in a way that, frankly, we've never seen before in the W? You know, I think the, the greatest thing is just for me, having been a part of the WNBA for 25 years, yeah. um, having worked on both sides of it in the in the media and in the coaching realm and being a, a player in this league a, as well. I mean, this is the moment that we've been waiting for. Mm. So I don't know if you prepare for it as much as you just embrace it, embrace where we are. Think about the momentum moving forward, where we wanted this league to be and where we still aspire for it to go uh, and, and just embrace this moment, embrace this opportunity, continue to help. You know, this team, this franchise, be better, position ourselves for success. So there you have it from the coach's mouth herself. That was Stephanie White. Excited to be back in Indiana, where she's from. I also saw a few things that I'm trying to find right now that, of course, when I need to find them, I can't find them. But I saw them earlier. <clears throat> um... Isn't it ironic that you remember Dijon A. Carrington said that uh, the Indiana Fever have the nastiest fans in the W, and she was coached by someone from Indiana who <laughs> coached the Indiana Fever, who was the assistant coach of the Indiana Fever. I, I mean, it's the the irony of all that nonsense. But there was a post here. Uh, here we go. There's one right here. Share screen. Let you see it directly. Boom, there you have it. There you have it. That is Caitlin Clark reposting Indiana Fever, hiring Stephanie White. Here's another one, Aaliyah Boston. I saw others, though. See, that's what I'm looking for specifically. I saw others. Others. Um, one of them was Lexi Hall, which is great. But the comedy one was Melissa Smith reposted this. And, of course, I can't find it right now. But Melissa Smith reposted it as well. So what do you think of that as an Indiana Fever fan? Are you up with the nonsense of Melissa Smith and, and all that stuff? I mean, what are your thoughts there? Because I think that is a very interesting component to this, that it seems like Melissa Smith would love to play for Stephanie White. Um we all know that Melissa Smith has got some athletic ability in her, and she was at, at one point a, a decent player. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that need to be worked on in her, with her game, most specifically her defensive presence and actually playing some defense. 
and also um, naturally learning to make a shot with her left hand and also understanding you're not the focal point. You are not the focal point. Your job will be to clean up the basket. If you happen to not get dumped off in a trade or or left you know available in the expansion uh, draft situation, that is the question right there. Are you gonna you know are you gonna accept that role? And that role is critical because every team needs someone in that role. You know you can't get a, you can't not have people that do that type of dirty work. If you're not willing to do the dirty work, then what do you want? What do you think your role is gonna be? You got three players who are better scorers than you yes you need to score some buckets but in the flow of the game not pound 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 until you take a bad shot and miss so um i think that's absolutely critical it it, you know is to figure out what's going to happen with her i mean i know lots of people can't stand her i'm not a fan but maybe a new coach is what she needed Maybe the issue was heavily Christie's sides. I do still think that she was a double agent, which I think in a situation involving DJ Nate Carrington, wherever Carrington's going to be playing, that can be a problem. Um, that can absolutely be a problem. But we shall see. This is a big, big day for the Indiana Fever. Um, I, I, I'm shocked to see. I'm shocked to see certain people posting different things about negativity about her in terms of, oh, she checked out her last year with Indiana and was pretty much coaching at Vanderbilt and at Indiana at the same time. I I don't know that. I have no idea. But to sit here and say that Christy Sides is a better coach than Stephanie White, I I mean, at least a head coach. I mean, you have to be out of your damn mind (laughs) because statistics tell you the story. And I would tell you, I think that Indiana had a more talented team than Connecticut. Do I think Connecticut had a deeper team? Yeah, but let's be real. Indiana played seven players. So it wasn't like they were playing 15, I mean 12. They weren't playing 12. And I think we also missed out on finding out if certain players were good enough to to be out there. We never really learned if they were good enough because they never got a chance. I mean, you remember how the season started with Lexi Hall sitting on the bench and and, and Christy Wallace starting, and and th- and that's the start of that season. I, I think that WNBA didn't help Indiana with that with that starting schedule, but I also think that had to do with Christy's sides being tremendously stubborn and trying to limit Caitlin Clark. And yeah, I think there was also some growing pains with the with the players growing to trust Caitlin Clark. Um, I think you saw that as as the season went on, they they. Kelsey Mitchell primarily really, really seemed to buy in to Clark. Um, I don't think that had anything to do with Christy Sides. Nothing. Nothing. So, yeah. It is uh, it's a big day for the Indiana, Indiana Fever. They have made their decision. They have hired Stephanie White. Let's be real. This decision had been made. I think they had to make it look like it hadn't been officially made yet um, for whatever reason. But yeah, this decision had been made, I'm sure, and she is now the new head coach for the Indiana Fever. And uh that's what it is. That's what it is. Anyhow, that's all I got. I'm excited as a Caitlin Clark fan to see what's gonna happen. And I still hope she tells the unrivaled basketball league to kick rocks. Please, Caitlin, do not waste your time. With this garbage, please do not do it. Do not, do not fall for this crap. They will have a spot for you. If you say no and they get to 36, they will open up six more spots and say, we will always have a spot for you, which is what they've already said. We will always have a spot for Caitlin Clark. So don't, don't, don't take the bait. Anyhow, also, I had a new thing made. This has Rudy's rant on here. This is my bling bling medallion. What do you think of my new my new gear? This is going to be my new staple piece because I'm ranting, baby. I thank you all again for your continued support of our channel. Go on over to YouTube and subscribe there as well. I will be doing a live uh, with Live Wire tomorrow, uh, so be be on be, get on over there and uh, I'll be myself, Ben Daniel, and Live Wire. I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, it's a good day for Indiana basketball. Facts over feelings. Come on now.